Hello and welcome to this English language webinar on the upcoming changes to the patent rules and patent regulations. My name is Henry Dossett and I will be presenting today. If you like, there's also a French language version of this webinar available on our website. In this webinar, we'll cover a brief overview of the new regulatory changes coming October 3rd, 2022, and what the applicant can expect to receive in terms of notices and what new fee pages they may interact with. Specifically, the new regulatory changes covered in this presentation are the Conditional Notice of Allowance, or CNOA, Request for Continued Examination, or RCE, and Excess Claim Fees, or ECF. For each of these upcoming regulations, we will provide example notices and fee page interactions. Please note, the information provided in this presentation is meant as an educational resource and should not be construed as legal advice. The regulatory changes come from an effort to streamline Canada's patent examination. What's the intent? The amendments in the patent rules seek to streamline patent examination and align aspects of the Canadian patent system with international norms. What's the benefit? These regulatory amendments support CIPO's mission to deliver timely IP rights, the government's commitment in Kuzma to reduce delays in the patent granting process, and to meet international obligations under the PCT. We'll start off with Conditional Notices of Allowance, or CNOA for short. This new provision is introduced by subsection 86.1.1 of the patent rules. It'll be applicable to all patent applications as of October 3rd, 2022. In essence, a CNOA combines aspects of a notice of allowance and an examiner's report. The CNOA requires that the applicant address only the remaining minor defects identified either by making certain amendments to the application to correct the defects or by submitting arguments as to why the application complies with the Patent Act and patent rules. For a compliant response to a CNOA, an applicant must reply within four months. They must address the minor defects raised in the CNOA by amendment or by argument, and they must pay the final fee. The CNOA mechanism can help get an application into condition for grant without triggering a request for continued examination, which we'll see later in this presentation, since a CNOA does not count as an examiner's report. So here's an example of a compliant response to a conditional notice of allowance. The applicant would pay the final fee as they normally would. They would also include arguments or amendments to address the defects in the CNOA. If the fee and response are submitted on or before the due date and the defects are addressed such that they're resolved, the application will proceed to grant. Here is an example diagram for non-compliant responses to conditional notices of allowance. In the first non-compliant scenario, failure to respond in good faith or pay the final fee within the time period will result in abandonment. This scenario could be remedied, however, if following abandonment within 12 months and upon payment of the reinstatement fee, the applicant satisfactorily addresses the defects raised in the CNOA and pays the final fee. Following this remedy, the application would generally proceed to grant. In the second non-compliant scenario, if either the examiner believes the amendments or arguments have not overcome the defects identified in the CNOA, or the applicant makes amendments beyond those permissible, the CNOA will be withdrawn. Any amendments from the date the CNOA was sent to the date the CNOA is withdrawn will be considered never to have been made, and the examiner will then send a report identifying the same defects that were raised in the CNOA. Here is an example conditional notice of allowance. On the first page, the applicant would find relevant information, such as the due date of the notice, which is four months from the date of the letter. As well, the total amount due would be shown here. This would include the final fee and any other fees, such as excess claims or excess page fees. The third page of the notice is where the applicant would find the specific defects raised which must be overcome to allow the application. Although not shown, 
The second page of this notice will contain generalized information for CNOAs, directing the applicant to the relevant parts of the patent rules. Here are a few frequently answered questions. If I receive a CNOA, is there any way to file a voluntary amendment and return to examination? Yes, you can request continued examination, seen later in this presentation. What happens if an applicant does not respond to a CNOA? The application will eventually go abandoned. What types of defects will be in a CNOA? Generally, the types of defects that an applicant can expect in a CNOA would be those relating to margin, line spacing, font size, page numbering, drawing requirements, parts of the application beginning on new pages, and statements incorporating by reference a document in the description. The Manual of Patent Office Practice will include examples of certain minor defects that could be included in a CNOA. The next new regulation is the Request for Continued Examination, or RCE for short. As of October 3rd, 2022, applications which have a request for examination on or after October 3rd will require a request for continued examination to continue examination following three examiner's reports. This comes from the new section 85.1 of the patent rules. Having received a third examiner's report, an applicant will need to make an RCE and pay a prescribed fee. Additionally, RCE will be required after every two subsequent examiner's reports. There is no limit to the number of RCEs from an applicant. In 2022, the prescribed fee will be $816 or $408 for small entities. If the applicant fails to submit a fee and a written request for continued examination within four months of being informed of the requirement to RCE, the application is deemed abandoned. See section 132 of the patent rules. Please note that an application cannot request an extension of time for RCE. Here we will look at an example diagram showing when a request for continued examination will be required. For applications with requests for examination on or after October 3rd, 2022, the requirement for the applicant to RCE occurs at the third report after requesting examination. If the application is allowed or conditionally allowed prior to a third report, then there is no requirement for the applicant to RCE. If the applicant submits a valid RCE, then there's an additional requirement to RCE at every second report thereafter. This may occur after a required RCE, for example, after the third report following the request for examination, or a second report following a previous request for continued examination. In straightforward cases, the requirement to RCE would occur at reports 3, 5, 7, and so on. However, the count will not always follow this pattern if, for example, one of the reports is subsequently withdrawn, or if there's an optional RCE following an allowance or conditional allowance. If a report is withdrawn, it does not contribute toward the overall report count that determines if an applicant must RCE. Here we see an example requisition that would be found in an examiner's third report or other report where RCE will be required to continue examination. The requisition will direct the applicant to section 85.1 of the patent rules regarding requests for continued examination and paragraph 132 2 E of the patent rules regarding abandonment following a failure to request continued examination. The applicant would now have to request continued examination if they wish to continue prosecution of this application. 
Here we have an example video of how an applicant would request continued examination in general correspondence after receiving a third examiner's report or another report that would require RCE. First, the applicant would click on Attachments and attach the response to the examiner's report. They would then select Other as the type of document and click Add File. Next, the applicant would click on Fees, select Part 3, Applications for a Patent, and then select Request for Continued Examination as requested in Examiner Report. They would then click Add Save and confirm that the correct fee was applied. They would then click Preview Submit and review the details before finally clicking Submit. If an applicant received a conditional notice of allowance and would like to continue prosecution, they may make a request for continued examination. Please note, if the applicant does not RCE and files amendments and arguments which do not overcome the CNOA, the CNOA will be withdrawn and a new examiner's report would be created including the same defects as the original CNOA. Any amendments as a response to the CNOA would not be considered. Here we have an example video of how an applicant would request continued examination in general correspondence after receiving a conditional notice of allowance. Similar to before, the applicant would attach a response such as an amendment, and then they would click on fees. They would select part three, applications for a patent, but now they would select Request for Continued Examination Response to a CNOA. They would then click Add Safe and confirm the correct fee was applied. They would then click Preview Submit and review the details before finally clicking Submit. Similar to the request for continued examination as a response to a conditional notice of allowance, a request for continued examination is required to return to examination after receiving a notice of allowance. Please note, a RCE will be required to continue prosecution for all notices of allowance beginning on October 3rd. This includes applications which had a request for examination before October 3rd. How would an applicant respond to a notice of allowance if they wish to continue prosecution? Here we have an example request for continued examination and payment in general correspondence. Similar to before, the applicant would attach a response such as an amendment and then they would click on fees. They would select part three, applications for a patent, but now they would select request for continued examination response to an NOA. They would then click Add Save and confirm that the correct fee was applied. They would then click Preview Submit and review the details before finally clicking Submit. Some more frequently asked questions, this time for request to continue examination. How many times can I request continued examination? There is no limit to RCE. If my request for examination was before October 3rd and I wish to return to examination, would my application be subject to RCE? Yes. Can I use interviews to avoid actions that count toward RCE? No. Examiners cannot prosecute applications outside of requisitions. Interviews should be used to discuss or clarify ongoing matters of the prosecution. Examiners may continue to request the applicant submit voluntary amendments to overcome some minor defects outside of those found in a CNOA. Do pre-final and final actions count toward examiner's reports for RCE? Yes. Can a third party make RCE? No. 
only the applicant can make RCE. Our final item is excess claim fees. As of October 3rd, 2022, excess claims fees, or ECF for short, will be introduced into both of the request for examination, or RE, fee, and the final fee. All applications with a request for examination on or after October 3rd will be subject to ECF when there are more than 20 claims on the file at the end of the day when RE is made. Additionally, an ECF component in the final fee will become applicable if at any time during prosecution, the number of claims on file is in excess of 20 and also exceeds the number of claims for which ECF have already been paid at RE. This change is meant to provide an incentive for applicants to reduce the number of claims in their application while still allowing the flexibility to add as many claims as they deem necessary to achieve the desired scope of protection for their invention. Note that where the applicant does not pay sufficient ECF at RE, they have two options. They can pay the difference in ECF or they can amend the claims to match the ECF already paid. Where applicable, a late fee will also be necessary. The RE date in these cases is the day on which the difference was paid or the amendment was made. Please note the following areas of the patent rules regarding excess claim fees. For request for examination, or RE, see Rule 80, Subsection 1, and Rule 80, Subsection 1.1 for fees and how claims are counted. For final fee, see Subsections 87.1 and 87.1.1 for fees and how claims are counted. For fee amounts, see Schedule 2 for the list of applicable fees. At item 10B for ECF at RE, and at item 14C for ECF at final fee. Please note that the fees are subject to change. To view the most current applicable fees, please visit the fees page on the Canadian Intellectual Property Office website. Here, we will go over four example patents which were allowed and see what the excess claim fees would be at the request for examination and at final fee. The y-axis is the number of claims counted, and from left to right for each application, we can see the claims at request for examination, the maximum claims counted during the examination, and the claims at final fee. In the first example, there were only 20 claims at the request for examination. So, no excess claim fees would apply at the time of the request for examination. However, there were at most 30 claims found in subsequent amendments. So, excess claim fees would apply for 10 claims. This would amount to $1,000 in excess claim fees. In the second example, there were 25 claims at the request for examination. So excess claim fees would apply for five claims at the time of the request for examination. This would amount to $500 in excess claim fees. At no later point did any amendments contain more than 25 claims. So no further excess claim fees would apply at the final fee. In the third example, there were 25 claims at the request for examination so excess claim fees would apply for five claims at the time of the request for examination for a total of $500 in excess claim fees. In addition, there were at most 45 claims found in subsequent amendments. So excess claim fees would apply for 20 claims at the final fee, since the applicant already paid for five excess claims at the request for examination. This would amount to an additional $2,000 in excess claim fees. In the fourth example, 
At no time did the application have more than 20 claims from the request of examination to the notice of allowance. So no excess claim fees would be required. When requesting examination, the applicant has three options of portals to choose from for paying excess claim fees. General correspondence, e-filing, and the national entry request or NER. We will show examples on general correspondence and e-filing portals. As the form for the national entry request is not yet complete, it won't be shown but the steps would be similar to those for general correspondence and e-filing. The first is an example of paying excess claim fees at request for examination using general correspondence. The applicant would click on fees. They would select part three applications for patent and then select request for examination, excess claim fees. They would then add the number of claims in excess of 20, in this example, 10. Click Add Save and confirm that the correct fee was applied. They would then click Preview Submit and review the details before clicking Submit. Second is an example of paying excess claim fees at request for examination using e-filing. The applicant would click on fees and under additional fees, they would select request for examination, excess claims. They would then add the number of claims in excess of 20 in this case 10, click Add Safe and confirm that the correct fee was applied. Here we are showing the filing fee, excess claim fees, and request for examination fee. They would then click Next. They would review the details before finally clicking Add to Cart. and proceed to payment. Excess claim fees examples. Here's an example notice for the unpaid excess claim fees at the request for examination before the due date. The notice will direct the applicant to pay any unpaid excess claim fees. We can see that there is an X marked beside the full payment of excess claim fees section of the notice. Here is an example of paying excess claim fees to correct for unpaid fees using general correspondence. The applicant would click on fees, select part three applications for patent, and then select correction of excess claim fees at a request for examination. They would then add the number of claims in excess of 20. In this example, 11, click add save and confirm that the correct fee was applied. They would then click Preview Submit and review the details before finally clicking Submit. Now we have an example late notice for request for examination. This would be sent if an applicant did not fully pay excess claim fees at the request for examination and also missed the due date to do so. The notice will direct the applicant to pay any unpaid request for examination fee, excess claim fees, and a late fee. To submit excess claim fees to correct for unpaid fees, the applicant would follow the steps shown before and include payment for any late fee or request for examination fees required. Here is an example notice of allowance where the applicant must pay excess claim fees along with the final fee. In this example, the application has 125 claims, 105 of which are excess claims and require excess claim fees paid with the final fee.
In this example, we will show paying excess claim fees at the final fee after receiving a notice of allowance using general correspondence. The applicant would click on fees, select part three applications for a patent, and then select final fee excess claims. They would then add the number of claims in excess of 20, for example, 12. Click Add Save and confirm that the correct fee was applied. Similarly, here is an example of paying excess claim fees at the final fee after receiving a conditional notice of allowance using general correspondence. In this case, the applicant would include an attached response to address any defects raised in the conditional notice of allowance. The applicant would click on fees, select part three, applications for a patent, and then select final fee, basic fee. They would then add the number of claims in excess of 20, for example, five, and click add save. Additionally, the applicant could add any other required fees such as excess page fees, Afterward, the applicant would confirm that the correct fees were applied. They would then click Preview Submit and review the details before finally clicking Submit. Finally, here are the frequently asked questions for excess claim fees. What if I have not paid the correct excess claim fees at request for examination? If underpaid, examination will not start until the entire excess claim fee is paid. If overpaid, fees will not be refunded. Do I need to pay excess claim fees throughout prosecution? No. Excess claim fees are only required at request for examination and final fee. Are fees less for small entities? Yes, the small entity fee for excess claims is half of the regular excess claim fee. Thank you. If you have any questions, please visit our frequently asked questions page or reach out to SIPO's client service center either by phone or by using our online inquiry form.